Aloha, Hawaii. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm your friend as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii. Think Tech Hawaii brings you topics from 45 very colorful show hosts with very diverse backgrounds. Today, our topic of discussion will be on the food that we can be hashtag grown not flown right here in Hawaii. What I would like you to take away from today's discussion is learning how simple it is to take your health back by getting back to the basics of growing your own food on the tar gardens. No matter where you live and no matter your economic circumstances, no matter what they are. Today, I'm very honored to welcome my special guest. Me. <laughs> so I felt the need to just share from my heart the value of growing with the Tower Gardens once again. So let me tell you a little bit about my background. I went to college, didn't finish, but then I got married and I ran a chocolate company for 20 years. So for 20 years, I made the people of Hawaii very happy and very satisfied with the chocolates that we were able to produce. For 20 years, I did exactly that. When I turned 50, I sold the company and I retired. So now, mind you, I had no idea what I was doing until I learned it. And I learned it and I understood it and I loved it. I also had two young daughters at the same time as my chocolate factory. So my daughters grew up in the chocolate world. And so now, funny though, it's really funny because they don't like chocolate so much. And that was a good thing for me because they wouldn't eat all the profits. But now 20 years thus, I have now been thrown into the world of getting healthy. And thus the title of my show, Take Your Health Back with Wendy Lowe. Now I'm just a titter chick from Miley and I knew nothing about whole food nutrition and what it meant to our bodies. But now I truly understand the power of plants and growing it. So now I'd like to really encourage all of you to just sit back and enjoy what I have to share with you about the tower gardens. So what is a tower garden? Let me show you and let me tell you all about what the tower gardens are. Tower gardens are just a vehicle to allow you to grow food. I use non-GMO, chemical-free, uh, growing uh, practices that I can produce the best quality of food for myself, my body, my friends, and my family. And I encourage a lot of us to do that. And did I tell you that when I grow my veggies, I have peace of mind that whatever I produce on my tower, I know I'm getting the best. So at, it's, it's on demand that I get to eat my food. I travel a lot. And so that means when I go on my trips, I don't have to clean out my icebox because I didn't buy any green stuff. It's all growing on my tower. And when I come back from my trip, I don't buy any more because it's growing on my tower. And I don't have to worry about it dying or about it not being watered because it does have a little pump that sends the water up the top of the tower, trickles down every day, 24 times a day. It's all set on timer. And so I don't have to do a whole lot because it does it for me. I want to share with all of you that I consume probably about $120 worth of food from my tower monthly. Okay, that's about $120 of food. And if I just gave you a calculation of what consumption I have on my kale, let me just tell you, every morning I cut about 10 leaves of kale, 10 leaves of kale of this size, of this caliber, chemical free, non-GMO, cut, blended into my body. I calculate that cost me about $4 just for my kale if you're going with Hawaii prices. $4 a day times 30 days a month, I consume at least $120 of kale in my body every month. Not to mention I grow basils, lettuce. Um, I had Swiss chard, tomatoes, cucumbers. Right now I have eggplant on my towers. And mind you, I live in urban Honolulu in a condominium, right on the 11th floor. And I've been doing this for the last seven and a half years. So. What it does, it gives me peace of mind. Also, the tar garden saves me a lot of money. All right, and that's another point that I really want to stress. Looking at all that green on the tar gardens, it really is just powerful food, a powerful food source for me, my family, and my friends who come to visit. And I want that for everybody. So I really am serious about sharing this information. So now, how did I learn about tar gardens? Well, the Tower Gardens came to me via our company, the Tower Garden slash Juice Plus company, and we were given this opportunity to grow. And now, mind you, I'm not a farmer. I have no interest in farming. Plus, I'm very busy. At that time, I was sitting on 12 boards. I was running two companies and raising five children. I didn't have to. 
I didn't have time to grow my vegetables. It was easier for me to run to the market, go to the open market, buy the food, come home, prepare it. And even at that, I didn't have a lot of time for that. But it came to me via our company and they asked us to just try it out. So what happened was when I put the little seeds into the little rock wool and the second day it started sprouting and I swear I felt like a grandma. I felt I was, I was responsible for something growing, something so precious as a little seed sprouting into a, a seedling. And then from that point, we transferred into the tower garden and that's how we get our food. So two weeks in this uh, germinator uh, kit, three weeks on the tower, it's ready for cutting and harvesting and then I get to eat it. So how simple is that? And why wouldn't I want this for myself? And why wouldn't I want to share this with all of Hawaii? But then the sad news came. Our company said, Wendy, we can't send these towers to Hawaii because the people of Hawaii will not spend $100 to $125 to ship this in. So mind you now, the box is about 18 inches high. It's about three feet in diameter. And it weighs about 48 pounds. So the shipping cost would probably be at least $100. So what I did was I shared this opportunity with my friends. And they all said, Wendy, I want one, I want one. So I went to the company and I said, we want it. We will pay for it, we want it. So we put it on a pallet and then we brought the first 30 tower gardens into Hawaii via Wendy's responsibility for getting it to Hawaii. And so after the first 30 came, 30, 40, 50 more people wanted it. So then I approached the company and I said, hey, what if I bought a 45 foot Matson container and you loaded it up with 150 towers, packed it up and sent it on to Hawaii and I'll take the responsibility. They said, okay, let's give it a shot. A thousand tower gardens later, we have tower gardens here in Hawaii. This is now the seventh year of having towers in Hawaii. And now the goal is to bring in tower garden farms right here in urban Honolulu, where we can grow in abundance this great food that we want to share with more and more people here in Hawaii because everybody can have grown, not flown in food. So I'm really excited about what the tower garden is all about. The tower garden, as you can see here, we use no dirt. The growing medium that we use is called rock wool. The rock wool is a volcanic organic material that is spun out into cubes. We simply drop the seeds into the cube, watch it grow in the germinator, and within the next two weeks, we just simply place it in the empty tower garden. And as I mentioned, in three weeks time, ready for our harvesting of lettuce. You cut the whole head of lettuce off, Two to three weeks later, you have another whole head. And you can do this a few times. I would suggest maybe about three times. After that, I would suggest you start more seedlings, putting it in and doing it again. In regards to my kale, and you're gonna see my beautiful kale in a few seconds. Um, my kale, I let it grow until it's this big, and then it gets bigger and bigger. My kale averages about six to eight feet. And what I do is I pick the leaves around on the bottom and the heart continues to grow. As the heart continues to grow, my tower, uh, sorry, my kale plant becomes seven to eight feet tall. And it's dynamic, amazing kale, robust in flavor, and even in quality of nutrient level registered by the University of Mississippi. So we use no dirt. We boast that we use 90% less water, 90% less space, and we have 100% success. Now, when we're growing our food source, a lot of uh, costs comes from the fact that the real estate is expensive, so we're paying rent on the land. Also, water costs and labor costs. So I can stand in right here stationary, and I can pick up to 55 heads of, 52 heads of lettuce without moving a whole bunch, just reaching and extending upwards of the tower. So the labor cost is at a minimal as well. So we really, really enjoy what we have in the tower garden. And I also wanna mention, our tower gardens are made not with PVC plastic, with food grade plastic. So this means no toxins will leach into the water, into the plants, into my body. It's also UV protected twice. So that means it can sit in the hot of Makaha or in the desert of Dubai or in Mesa, Arizona at 120 degrees. It won't crack or chip. My towers have been sitting on my balcony for the last seven and a half years. No cracks, no chips, a little discoloration, but it's okay. The green, beautiful, lush plants cover the discoloration of the tower, no big deal. So now I would like to show you, because I know you're wondering, what is a tower garden? How the heck does that work? I have a little video here that will explain by 
animation how the tower garden works. So let, let's enjoy this. Garden's state-of-the-art aeroponic vertical garden system uses both water and air to produce more colorful, better tasting, and incredibly nutritious fruits, vegetables, and herbs. Tower Garden has a 20-gallon reservoir at its base that stores the tower tonic nutrient solution. Developed by experts in plant and human nutrition, Tower Tonic Mineral Blend enables superior plant growth and better nutrition from your Tower Garden produce. The process begins once the seedlings have been placed in your tower garden. Here they will be nourished with tower tonic nutrient solution. Inside the reservoir is a small, low wattage submersible pump. The pump pushes the nutrient solution up through the tower to the top. From there, the nutrient solution drips through the central tower using a special device that evenly cascades the solution over the exposed plant roots. On the journey down the tower, the nutrient solution feeds the roots and becomes highly oxygenated as it cascades gently down the reservoir. This process is continuous, providing fresh oxygen, water, and nutrients to the roots of the plants. This patented aeroponic process enables food crops to grow faster than they would in soil, so they can be harvested more often. And it makes Tower Garden the healthier, easier, smarter way to grow your produce. See how simple that was? And it's just as simple as that. Let me tell you, if this chocolate maker slash housewife can grow and be very successful, you can too. That's how simple it is. So now that you've seen the whole idea of the tower gardens, let's just start it, take it from the beginning. All we're gonna do is show you the seedlings. As I said, we put little seeds into the rock wool, and then the rock wool sits there um, wet with water, and the seedlings start sprouting. And this here, this photo right here is about, mm, I would say about two weeks old. And so after this stage, now we're gonna take each of those little rock walls and then we're gonna place it into the tower garden. And as you see in the next slide, those are about two week old seedlings that we place into the tower. And then we're gonna just let it be. We're gonna go on there, love on it, breathe air into it, breathe life onto it, and just let it grow. So that's all you have to do. Everything is in the kit. You're just gonna add water and love, and then you add the water, you add your tonic, and it kind of does the rest. So it's kind of dummy proof. That's why I'm so successful at it. And I want that for you too, because if Wendy can grow it, you can grow it too. And I'm very serious about that. And um, people ask me, what kind of seeds do you use, Wendy? Um, I would suggest using non-GMO seeds, uh, USDA grade uh, organic seeds and it's all listed on the seed packs so you can choose what you want to grow and they asked me does it have to be organic seed it's totally up to you what you want to grow you can grow whatever you want as long as it's not a rooted vegetable as long as it's a leafy veggie that um, how you can get the seeds for it you can do what you need to do some people also um, source hardware stores where you have the little seedlings or the plants and what they do is I personally don't recommend it but if you need to start this way it is fine just take the plant out of the pot then you need to submerse it into water and wash all the dirt, all the vermiculite, everything foreign off of the root system. And then I would actually spray the plants with our um, organic means of pesticides, which we usually use Dawn, diluted with water and some vinegar. And we would spray to make sure all the contaminated bugs will not be transported into the tower to affect the other plants. And so, that's simply how I would do that if I had to do it that way. Otherwise, I truly enjoy getting the seeds, sprouting it, looking like tutu, grandma, to these babies, and then from that point, transplanting it into the tower. And that's truly, truly how simple that is. So we're gonna take a 60 second break right now, and we're gonna come back with my fabulous, fantastic kale that I wanna show off to all of you. Aloha. Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3pm and this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier and have fun at the same time. So 
do join me. I look forward to seeing you and uh, aloha. Aloha. My name is Becky Sampson, and I'm the host of It's About Time on the Think Tech Hawaii, a digital nonprofit organization that's raising public awareness. Join us on Wednesday at 2 p.m. where we talk about real issues. Some of the topics will include entrepreneurship, health, life skills, and growing your business. So once again, this is Becky Sampson on It's About Time on Wednesday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha, everyone. So as we left you, Earlier, the part, the first part of the show truly just spoke about the Tower Gardens and what it does, how it works. So if you missed the first part, go back and watch it and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm just really excited because I want to share with you Wendy's crazy kale. And this kale is truly out of one tower. I must have on that tower probably about eight plants of kale. And that's my favorite favorite is thing to grow. I grow lettuce and basil and all the other fun stuff, but that kale is really what sustains me. A lot of calcium, proteins, nutrients that my body needs daily. And so every morning for the last seven and a half years, I have been going to my tower, cutting about 10 leaves, putting it in a blender, making a smoothie concoction, and putting it into my body, fueling my body to be able to perform at its best for the last seven and a half years. And truly, I have never bought kale a day in my life. And the reason for that is I hadn't eaten kale until I started growing my own. And so kale just wasn't something that us locals would go out and buy, you know, like Manoa lettuce was a daily staple for us. Kale, it just wasn't. And so now that I'm growing it, I focus on growing the best quality of kale. And I want this level of, of, of food into all of our bodies. And so, we just really want to take health back. And how can we do it? The Tower Garden is just a part of the solution to taking your health back because we're growing non-GMO, chemical-free, cut to body fresh. And so that means my kale smoothies are just about five minutes old before it enters into my system, performing for me what I expect to, how I expect to perform at daily. And I'm gonna say to you that this is my 60th birthday year. I'm very excited because at 60, when I'm surfing with those brothers out there and they're like in their 20s, Auntie Wendy can keep up, and that really matters to me. So I want that same level of performance for as many of us as possible. So when we grow old, we grow old gracefully and um, with a lot of vim and vigor. And that's what I want for all of us. So not only can the Tower Gardens grow kale, but it can grow basically anything. We have peppers, we have eggplants, we have tomatoes, watermelons, cucumbers, cantaloupes. Basically, the tower can grow anything except rooted vegetables uh, and fruit. So we can't grow potatoes, uh, carrots, beets, and radishes. However, I have seen um, radishes or beets grown uh, on the tower. The hole is only about this big, so the radish head or bulb sits and it blocks up the whole opening, but they're going for the radish or the beet tops. Is why they're gonna um, opt to grow beets in their tower garden because they want the greens of that um, fruit or that vegetable. So that's the only reason why. And the logic behind the, the, the tower garden not being able to grow rooted veggies versus focusing on leafy veggies is because when Tim Blank, the designer of the tower garden, his heart was that with the rooted vegetables, you can peel off the first layer that is involved or in contact with all the, the toxins. So with the lettuces, the kale, the chards, and all of that, you can't peel it off. You've got to wash it off. So whether they're being bugs, worms, slugs, any of that, you, you've got to really soak it and wash it. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get it that clean. So the focus is producing the best quality of leafy veggies, thus kale and the lettuces and all of that. And um, I'm just so excited that we are able to have that, that I don't have to scrub my lettuce, because you know what happens if you scrub green leafy things, they get all wilted and yucky very quickly. And so let me tell you who can grow with the tar gardens. So the Department of Education in the state of Hawaii are really excited about the tar gardens. We have tar gardens in school, and one of the schools that really took to liking to the tar gardens was Iolani, or is Iolani School 
They have a young lady named Debbie, and Debbie is a sustainability director. So she off offers her students all the means of growing. She has traditional dirt farms. She has aquaponics, aeroponics, hydroponics, every different system. So the student can learn basically egg or basically how and where our food source comes from. And I think this is a very critical part of the curriculum that they're really experimenting and promoting this with the students because back in the day, a few years before, when there wasn't so much a focus, especially in the urban areas, if you showed a student a tomato and you asked them, kids, what is this? They would say, that's an apple, auntie, that's an apple. Or that's, they wouldn't know that that was a tomato. And the reason for that is if you're not involved with farming, some of these students only see tomatoes as far as ketchup, salsa, and they never saw the tomato in its entirety, in its wholeness. And so by allowing them to grow in the school system, you're really giving them the opportunity to enhance their quality of life because you know for a fact, and I know for a fact, if they grow it, and they're involved with that process of it growing, they're gonna probably eat it. And that's the goal that we want, is that these students know what they're eating, where it comes from, and what it can do for your body. That food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food, is what we're always gonna promote. And so we're really, really excited that the Department of Education is really, really um, gravitating to using this form uh, of, of, of growing, and uh, I'm just excited to be working with many, many schools. We go to Kamehameha, we go to Waiau Elementary, Campbell High School, uh, Lelihu High School has an amazing agriculture department. We we're all, at one point I was growing food at the Easter Seals, and my students there were on wheelchairs, they were autistic kids, and you know what? They saw the value to watching the seed drop, and grow and grow and grow. And then they had the pleasure of serving those salads to Auntie Wendy. And then when I would turn around, I would see these kids on wheelchairs and the kids with autism, they were actually eating it. And that was such a joy for me. And this is one of the reasons why I will never stop promoting grown, not flown. And especially when all walks of life have this opportunity, whether they're the kupuna, where the kupuna could not bend down to the ground um, at this age in their, uh, stage in their life, now they can grow vertically. And it makes sense. And then the keiki can grow on the lower end. The kupuna can grow on the higher levels of the tower. And then they can have intergenerational community around the tower gardens. That to me is valuable when we can bring all these different components where everybody of every age bracket, every economical status in life, everybody can come along and eat the best quality of food for themselves as well as all the people they wanna promote this with. And so for that, I am very excited. As I mentioned earlier, I live in a condo. I probably have about three or four tower gardens on my lanai and they're thriving. I have sunshine because my, top, my apartment faces the west. So I have sunshine from about two in the afternoon to about 536. And that's sufficient because you saw my kale. That's the sunshine that it gets up there in my condo. And it's very happy and it's very uh, nutritious for me and it makes me very happy and very healthy. But I also have a tower garden in my apartment. And that's because I like to show off the indoor lights. And these are LED lights. Yes, I have sunshine on my balcony, but I also want to show that if you don't have sunshine in your apartments or in your facilities, you can still grow the best quality of food as well. The lights are on for about 14 to 16 hours. It's LED lights. The good thing for me is I live in a condo high in the sky and I actually have the penthouse. So my penthouse looks like a spaceship because it's all lit up with these four LED lights. Now, because I have these lights in my living room, I don't turn on the lights in my living room or my dining room or my kitchen anymore because those lights are feeding the plants, helping them grow, but it's also cutting back on my household electricity bill, although it has its use of electricity, but again, they are four LED bulbs, which make a lot of sense. They're not hot to touch, and they just continue to help my plants grow consistently. And I might even add, that the tower garden lights, these LED lights, actually have a consistent level of, of rays going into my plants. So it actually, it does even better than just sunshine because sunshine sometimes is not there. For example, we have these lights growing with our tower garden farms in O'Hare Airport. 
For the last eight years, we have towers at O'Hare Airport producing enough food for the restaurants in the facility as well as excess pro productivity. So what they're doing is they're packaging it up and they're selling it to the passerbys and passengers coming off their planes. So indoors, that's what's happening. We have tower growings growing all over. In fact, at Orange County Convention Center in Florida, people actually book there are conventions in that facility because they know the food that comes out of that um, kitchen will be the food that was grown right there at the convention center. How cool is that? And also I wanna share um, Oracle Baseball Field in San Francisco before it was known as AT&T Baseball Field. They also have tower gardens right in their end zones where they're offering their patrons freshly grown food. So instead of just eating hot dogs, hamburgers, and popcorn, you've got fresh produce that you can serve up to your bodies. Now I wanna segue into how we work with other community organizations. Every Boys and Girls Club in the United States will have an opportunity to have a tower garden given to them by our company. And there are over 4,000 uh, 4, Boys and Girls Clubs in the U.S. So if you know anyone uh, that is passionate about growing and would love to help the Boys and Girls Club, let us know and we can help to get that tower garden to the Boys and Girls um, facilities. And now I would like to introduce the brainchild behind it all. This is Tim Blank. Tim Blank came to us again in January, and he's here to help promote Grown Not Flown. So here he was at the CIP, uh, Culinary Institute of the Pacific, where we were implementing Tower Garden Farm and growing food that the students will be able to grow and watch and then pick and get it to the different restaurants on campus. How amazing would that be that we can actually do that right there on campus, as well as what they're doing at like Colorado University and many other universities, USC, UCLA, they're all doing that. And so we wanna be right up there with the other colleges of the nation. So as promised, I wanna share with you why I'm so passionate about this tower garden and, and why it makes so much sense. This right here is the rat lung the rat lung worm, little gray, black, brownish snail or a slug that has been in, infiltrating, infiltrating our big island of Hawaii. I was on the phone the other night with my friend. She's a vegan, but she will not eat anything that is grown from that island, especially because she has been affected and afflicted with the rat lung worm disease. When I heard this story, I said, you know what? We got to get this message out. The rat lung worm, should not be able to climb up the tower garden, the base, uh, as well as the tower. And if it does, because they have so many, I would suggest that you put copper tape around the base or a roll of pennies around the base so that the slugs, uh, the snail slugs won't go over into the tower, into the, uh, your plants. And I strongly recommend that. And this is the exact reason why I'm doing this. They're not reporting it on TV but there are so many people right now suffering in the hospital with this disease. And once you get it, it shuts down your whole immune system. And I don't want that for any of us, especially our Kiki. So tower gardens make a lot of, lot of sense. And as I wrap things up, because we're running out of time, I just wanna show you again, these are the perfect, beautiful tower gardens. We're growing food for all of you, for all of Hawaii. I believe every tower, or every home, every lanai should have a tower garden within their reach. And that means the best quality of food for all of us. So remember, hashtag grown not flown. And I want this level of living and life for all of you out there. If you have any questions, just give us a call. Aloha from now from ThinkTech Hawaii. Aloha, everyone.